Uh, your bio mentions that you were interested in art from childhood. Mm -hmm. did, did your family actively encourage you to consider that as a career, or did they push you in other directions like a lot of parents do? No, uh, it was um, growing up in the woods of Tennessee, I actually lived really far away from people. Mm -hmm. I, lived, uh, I, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather on his farm, so I was always drawing and painting and... Uh, and making things. Uh, Tennessee has this red clay that's uh -huh. real rich and thick. Yeah. And uh, I was always making like cars and people out of this clay, but they they always they never said no. You know, don't do that or stop doing that. unless I was drawing on the wall, which I got in trouble a couple times. <laughs> but that's that's just part of childhood. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were always very supportive. In fact, there was a magazine, and that it just dawned on me when you asked that question. Uh, that came out once a month, and they always had kids' drawings in the back of it. So they encouraged me, actually, to uh, do some drawings for it, and I actually got in a couple times. And we're, I'm like, I was like five years old. Very good, very good. Yeah. Let's see, a couple over here. Um, what was your career path to becoming an art du art director at the beginning of your career? I know that word kind of is kind of means a bunch of different things depending on where you were. Right. Well, it... Uh, that was actually my second job. My first job, I actually got fired from. <laughs> uh, it was it was actually involving animation, slideshow animation. I had no experience at the time, uh, and I was doing graphics. And then the the person who owned the company wanted me to learn then to do the uh, programming and make all the projectors work. We're talking like twelve projectors, and I just I just couldn't do it. So I actually got fired from that first job, and. Uh, I started freelancing at this agency in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and uh, they eventually hired, hired me on full time. And it just kind of it just kind of like a natural progression in design. You know, usually you start out you know just a designer, and then you kind of become like a creative director, an art director, and then an accounts person. But uh, at that studio, I kind of wore hat, all kinds of hats. I was the uh, a designer, creative director, art director web guy, animation guy, illustrator, janitor, wow. uh, you, you know, uh, just all that stuff. And there was, there was, uh, there was six designers and I was the only guy. So it's, uh, it was, yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, uh, but we all at the agency wore different hats. So it wasn't just one person was art director and you had that hierarchy. Oh, okay. So that, that was, must have, sounds like it was a relatively smaller company then. Yes, yeah, and it was great. It was, it was everybody got along fairly well, and you know, as best as just you could. And but you know, we were all everybody's very open to ideas and throwing out ideas and critiquing each other's work because you know we, you know, we, the object was to make the client happy. Absolutely. Yeah. And that applies to every business. Yes. <laughs> now here's what I really want to know. Okay. But besides your wife's swift kick, <laughs> as you described it, uh -huh. how did you go about making the practical transition from employee to business owner? Well, I mean, it, I, the credit really goes to her. Uh, I, I wasn't happy towards the to the end of uh, my career at the agency. I felt kind of stagnated, and I went as far as I could go, mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, advancement. And uh, she just said, you know. Why don't you give it a shot? You have nothing to lose. You can always get another job if it doesn't work out. You know, and she actually worked uh, like two and a half jobs when I went out on my own just to have income. So, you know, I, I give her all the credit because she really did. She really gave me the swift kick in the butt to to do this. Okay, very cool. Always great to have a supportive spouse. Yes, yes, and you know, she's been supported ever since. So, so I, you know, again, all my success, I, I. Credit to her. Tell me this: Do you have okay. a favorite category to work in? Uh, your your three that you show that you focus on on your website is for illustration, animation, and logo design. Do you have a favorite? I I, I, I love illustration. Uh, I just I love the uh, the ability to tell tell a story visually. Uh, I which I that's why I want to get in the kids books. Because right now I do a lot of commercial advertising stuff, so you know the story stops with one little icon. But I like to complete the story visually. Uh, I just I love drawing. I always have as a kid. Uh, even though I work digitally, I still draw all my sketches with uh, pencil and paper. Okay. Because I like the feel of a pencil, 
and I like having lead on my fingers and erasing, and there's you know eraser dust all everywhere. So, uh, illustration is my first love. Yeah, that's real cool. I, I know our professors always encourage us to keep a, a, a sketch pad on us at all mm -hmm. times. I, I haven't been as diligent this term, but you know that that is the re recommendation. Always do the old fashioned because it bridges you to the the current technology. Yeah, it, it is difficult. Because you know, I tried to sketch even on my own, but if I spend a whole day sketching or drawing, you know, at six, seven o'clock at night, I'm, I'm tired, I'm wiped out. But I still find myself sometimes just doodling something, and I just bought an iPad with a sketch app for it. So I've been trying to play around with that, and wow. still, but I still like the pencil and paper. It's just nothing like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just old school that way, I guess. Uh -oh. <laughs> What made you focus on those three things in particular entrepreneurially after having done so many different things as an employee at other agencies? Well, I, I felt that they were my strongest uh, suits. Uh, I, I really got tired of laying out type. Uh, I, I mean, I love type design, I love fonts, but I, I just really got tired of it. And I, to be honest, I don't think I was very good at it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think logo design was was my specialty at the agency. Plus, you know, plus the illustration part. And again, it just goes back to to drawing. Even the animation, you know, I'm drawing, doing storyboards, uh, drawing in the computer. I, it, it's the drawing and the things that really attracts me to all three of those. Excellent. Now, which medium is your personal favorite that you resort to just for the fun of doing something? Well, that's real. That's a that's a really good question. Uh, I mean, I work in Adobe Illustrator a lot, uh -huh. and now I'm trying to make the transition over to Painter. Oh. Uh, I bought I bought that software, and I just actually I just upgraded to twelve because it has all these new features. So, yeah. But traditionally, if I had to paint traditionally, I'd probably paint in gouache or oil. Okay. I just uh, I like gouache. I know in art school everybody hated gouache because it was just so difficult to work with. Because it dried so quick, it would streak. Um, but I, and I just, I guess it's been embedded in me since day one of art school, and I, I love gouache. So that's, I know it's kind of a roundabout answer to the question, but uh, if you're talking about six months, maybe it'll be painter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, well, tell me why, why, why the transition from from uh, Adobe to painter? Well, it's, uh, I'm trying to get in the children's book market. And it seems like they like a little softer look, a more traditional look. And then I've gotten some critiques from people, and they said my work's great. They they love it, but they think it's a little too commercial looking. Ah. And then they said it lacks that painterly quality that a lot of the uh, publishers and art directors from the publishers are looking for. So it has me thinking. Well, maybe I should take a step back and maybe make a right turn to another direction. I'll never give up the Becker stuff because I just I love Adobe Illustrator. And I think eventually, in about two or three years, it's going to look like you're doing a wall painting. Oh, wow. I, I honestly think that painter will, you won't be able to tell the difference. They'll start incorporating a lot more painterly stuff into Adobe Illustrator. But for now, um, I'm venturing towards painter. And the reason painter over Photoshop is uh, I just think painter has more tools. You can actually get a traditional looking painting. With, with the software, mm -hmm. and Photoshop is still digital looking. Yeah. And the other thing with Painter I'm realizing is that you can have different paper textures underneath, which gives you different looks and everything. So, yeah. but I, again, I think Photoshop will probably start doing all these other things, and you, it, you won't be able to tell the difference from any of them. So. Well, you, you mentioned art school, which is a segue to my next question. Okay. T tell me, how did you come to enroll in the Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania School of Art and Design in particular, and what was your curriculum focus there? Well, actually, it was called York Academy of Art uh, my freshman year, and then uh, they ran into some financial trouble, so they closed down after my freshman year of school. Okay. So what happened is that the teachers and the faculty, they got together and they started Pennsylvania School of Art and Design, ah. uh, but they didn't have a lot of uh, uh, grants to offer or anything like that, or loans, because they're so new. They were really, I don't think they were accredited just yet, and it takes a, a year. So I had to actually work a year, and then I went back to school. Um, so, now what was the original question? <laughs> oh, well, how, how did you come to pick that school in particular? 
Uh, well, first of all, it was very affordable for me at the time. And we're talking 1981. And I think the school was $6,000 a year, which is, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's, that's, that's real cheap. That's a quarterly <laughs> rate in some places now. <laughs> right, right. But at the time, it was, it was kind of a mid-level financial school. But we had a, there wasn't a campus, so you lived in apartments and around the school building. So, you know, it, it kind of balanced out a little bit to a hiring school. Uh, the reason I picked that school, it just, the minute I walked through that building, it just breathed art. It wasn't sterile. It was an old schoolhouse that they converted into an art school. Mm -hmm. So there were paintings all over the walls. There, even the walls were painted. Uh, you walked into the rooms, and, you know, it just it just breathed art. I mean, 24-7. Anytime you walked in, it just hit you that this was what it was all about. And there was There was no... There's no like English or math or any of that stuff, so I was attracted to that part as well. Okay. So it was it was just twenty four seven art. Pure art. Okay. Pure art. Yep. And I see also on your on your online resume uh, that you returned as as an instructor. What what made you want to go into the instructor ranks? Well, I, I think after so many years of doing this, I, I finally felt that I had I could offer something to students mm -hmm. and uh, that the school actually contacted me I was talking to somebody at a client meeting and it turned out they were a uh, administrative person at the school and so they said oh would you be interested in teaching and I was like well I really never thought of it at the time but I said you know why not and so it just kind of happened a roundabout way the teaching part but I, it was kind of in the back of my mind and now that I'm up here in Maine I'd actually like to get back into teaching but uh, the schools up here are kind of far, very far apart from where I live. So <laughs> it'd be like an hour drive to go teach somewhere. Oh wow! Yeah. Um. Now, as far as the the, the clients that you work with, mm -hmm. I, I see that you have a a really good heavy hitter list. Um, explain the process of, of getting clients do you find them or do they find you how, how does that work is that a two-way process well I, I think it's a two-way it's a two-way street uh, when I first went out on my own I had no clients we hardly had any money in the bank and then it was just somebody saw my business card that I had made at the time mm -hmm. so I started doing editorial illustrations for a central PA magazine and so I was kind of getting published and then people in the area started seeing my illustrations and then you know, it just started, the domino effect started slowly. Uh, and then, I, I forget how, oh, I started posting things online when port, online portfolios became popular. I said, you know, I started posting everywhere I could, and then people started seeing it. Uh, McDonald's contacted me because of my online portfolio. Uh, AOL, I got through an agency that contacted me, um, again, through an online portfolio. And then it was just the word of mouth started spreading as well. Word of mouth is great. It'll get around. If you do a bad job, it'll get around quicker than if you do a good job. Bad news Work always seems to work that way. What's that? I said bad negative news always seems to spread that way. Oh, it does. <laughs> oh, if you're difficult to work with, you're you're doomed. <laughs> oh man. Well, you mentioned online portfolios, and that that leads me to one of my questions. Uh, about the the online world, I contacted you through LinkedIn, and I see that you've been blogging since 2007 as well. How do you use social media for business, whether it's been just for yourself or even when you were working for the other agencies? Well, uh, actually, I've only been using the social media probably in the last, really using it in the last three years. Um, again, it started when we moved up to Maine. You know, we were the only, we didn't know anybody up here, and all of our family and friends were back in Pennsylvania or, or down south. So that's kind of when I got on the Facebook and then, uh, and then, you know, contacting people. And then I thought, well, when they, they have the fan pages. Uh -huh. And so I set up a fan page for the business, and then people, oh, you should do a Twitter thing. So, I, you know, like, uh, how many, how many social networks can you do? And then I get on Twitter, and now I'm talking to all these artists and editors and stuff. Uh, I really haven't gotten a lot of work from either one. Uh, Faith, or LinkedIn, I've gotten some projects from, some really nice projects. Oh, wow. So, but it, it's, it's, I have a friend who's a children's book illustrator, and she's gotten work from her Facebook page. So it, it works. It's just, you know, being on, being on there at the right time, talk, talking to the right person. It's, I think it's a lot of timing. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, just like anything else. Now, uh, you, you kind of answered this question, but I, I'll throw it out there. It, I was going to ask, what media do you use for your colorful and lively illustrations? But you mentioned Illustrator. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, so those are, for your illustrations, is it is it basically the digital software that you're working with, whether it's Adobe or, or, or other products? Yeah, most of those are done in Adobe Illustrator. What I do is I... As I said earlier, I still do sketches by uh, hand, and then I scan them in. And if it's if it's for myself, I can kind of do a sketch in one drawing because I already know what I want. But if it's for a client, what I usually do is I sketch the components separately, then I scan them in, and I actually arrange the composition in layers in Photoshop. That way, if they have any changes, I don't have to redo the drawing because sometimes if I do a drawing more than twice, I get bored with it right away, uh -huh. and then and then it's just like okay, whatever you want. I have no interest in it anymore. So, and then I take that, I bring it into Illustrator as a template, and then I start building layers over top of that. Okay, very good. And one last question. On your most recent LinkedIn update, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you were illustrating your first children's book. Uh, you, 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 you alluded to that earlier. Uh, how did that opportunity come about, and can you give us any hints on what the book is about, or is that top secret at the moment? Uh, I can kind of give you a hint. Well, what happened was I, I won a uh, critique from uh, Nancy Galt Literary. They're, uh, they're a big name in the children's book publishing. So uh, the the person there, was she was great. I, you know, I thought it was going to be one of those, like, uh, email critiques of my work, and she goes, no, I'd like to call you and talk to you about it. I'm like, okay. Wow. So I figured it's going to be like a 10, 15 minute. It was an hour and a half conversation. Wow. So it was great. It was just wonderful. I mean, she really went through my work, and she told me what she thought. And she's the one that kind of said, you know, you kind of need to loosen up and maybe a little more traditional-looking stuff. Uh, and she gave me kind of insight what they're looking for. Then I, I told her some story ideas, and one she thought was funny and kind of gross. <laughs> and then, then I told her the second one. She goes, she goes, well, when you have that written, I want to read it. She goes, because I haven't heard anything like this before. Yeah. And the basic, the basic idea is, about, I moved around a lot as a kid, so it was hard for me to keep friends. So it's basically about uh, this boy and his friend being so far apart, but how they figure out how to stay in touch with each other. And that's about all I can say. <laughs> oh, cool. Very interesting. It's just really interesting to, to hear from um, you as a, a longtime professional how opportunities come about and how you continue to learn and grow. and. That's, that's basically what, what our professors are, are teaching us, not only yeah. you know, at DePaul, but I'm sure at, at, all, at all schools that practice any form, teaching you, yeah. teach you any form of art. So. Right. And really, you're going to find that once you graduate, that's when your learning really begins. Uh -huh. they're, just, they're just getting you ready to graduate. And then once you get there and you get your first job, then you'll realize how much you don't know. <laughs> and it's not one of those. And a lot of it, it's something that can't be taught. Yeah, and, and I honestly I think once you stop learning, it's time to do something else. It really is. Then you've gone as far as you can. I mean, you may not know everything, but if you stop learning, then I think it's time you have to, you know, whatever it is. Oh, cool. Very good. Well, that's all all of my questions, Russ. I like okay. to thank you for the opportunity. Oh, sure. I hope this that helps. Been, yeah, this has been outstanding.